You might have noticed that I have changed, but I thought that as Gary is using a suffrage cookbook, I would look the part when I go to try the dishes. And I'm now standing here in the Boog Tube. Yes, you heard that right, Boog Tube. It was named after Tony Boog in the 1970s. He was um, the head of catering here at Raw Holloway. And this corridor had quite a big role to play in the eating at Raw Holloway. From the very beginning, the women were expected to line up, not in day dress as I am, but in evening dress every evening, and then to line up in here and process into the dining hall. So everything was very formal. It was a bit like being in a stately home so that their respectability could absolutely not be questioned. Um, you might notice that there's glass in the boot tube and that wasn't the case in the early years but the women complained of being cold when they were lining up so they introduced the glass to the corridor. Now we're in the octagon. This is the room that the women would have entered on their way to the dining hall and it is pretty sumptuous. If you look around, there's painted columns, there's a beautiful painted ceiling, um, there's even little painted bits at the bases of the columns all the way around. And around it, it says, Salve, welcome, hello. So it's a really welcoming space, but extremely grand. Um, and I think, again, it gives you this idea that Eating was at the heart of the social life of the college. Everybody was welcome to eat together. So just before I go to the dining hall, I've just spotted this, uh, which is a water pipe made by Merriweather and Sons fire engine makers. So this must have been the emergency uh, water pipe in case there were any fires in the kitchen. Um, and we're actually underneath the water tower, so the water would have come directly from above the tower down here and then been ready for any emergency. Really nice. Here I am in the dining hall waiting to try the suffrage recipes. As a middle class woman coming in to the dining hall, I think if I was a student for the first time coming in, I would have been pretty awed by this space. It is incredibly decorative and formal. And most of the women coming here probably lived in some very nice townhouses, but probably nothing quite as grand as this. The room would have been laid out very differently. This is a very informal setup for today's students, but there would have been tables with tablecloths and silver cutlery and the crockery that was made, there was a butler, and over there would have been the high table where some of the students would have joined the principal every meal. We know from diaries and letters that some of the students really look forward to conversing with their principal, whereas others were absolutely terrified about having to make conversation, particularly with Miss Penrose, whom was known for being quite quiet. Having waited three hours, I'm absolutely starving and I can't wait to try these recipes. I'm a little unsure about how they're going to turn out, but I'm very, very game for trying that casserole. So I'm joined by Gary. I'm dressed for the part. I'm really excited to know what it's going to taste like. Well, well, we'll bring out the food in a minute for you. But there's some things in front. So what, what are these? What's this? So I've, I've been rummaging around in my catering storeroom downstairs and I managed to find some old crockery that would have been used probably in that period when it first opened. So we've got our so with the crest on top. Royal Holloway College, because we weren't then part of Royal Holloway and Bedford New College. No. So I guess that's the point when they had to, to get rid of this crockery when we changed into Royal Holloway and Bedford yeah. New College. So we did have some large oval platters as well and um, they were still being used 10, 15 years ago in really? here as well. Oh, that's really interesting. So, they but been but used the that plates, long. bowls and stuff were all kind of put, in, put away and we've, for the students, we just kind of have changed to the basic plain crockery. Um, and then we also have a sample, if you like to see, of the crested stuff we use now. So we, rather than the initials, we just put the, the Holloway crest at the top. 
and then we've got all the sides. So these will be the things that we will use for conferences and weddings and any sort of fine dining dinners. It so does feel quite fancy. Should do. So let me get the, the poultry casserole. Right. This is really good. It's really nice. I would eat that. Good. I'm pleased. I like it. I'm going to go for some chicken. So you can sort of get the flavour of the rosemary coming through. You can get the, the hint of the cloves coming through. Yeah, little hint. It doesn't taste Christmassy. I thought it was going to be really Christmassy. So the sauce, you can see it's, it's, it's thickened compared to for the water it was. And that's just natural sort of thickening from, from reducing it down and the flavors coming out. And that will, that will come in as well from the root veg as well. You can you get thickening from, from the carrots and, and the celery as well, that will absorb. And then, yeah, it's really nice. I think I might want the recipe, if you can decode it for me and- um... Well, I have to try and remember what I put in now and how much. <laughs> <laughs> so in here, with the, with the way the tables are set up, in rows that's how it kind of would have looked in the dining hall back back when it first opened as well so it would have been long rows so for people to understand it's kind of how harry potter is so long long yeah. tables you'd have a head table where a headmistress or headmaster would sit and be very formal in that sense um although it's not there anymore there used to be a, a dumb waiter in the in the corner which you can see the boxing of where it was yeah. and it came out and then that's where the food would be passed up from, from the, the under kitchen. From the under kitchen as well. So. And I can see the hooks. We've got a banner in the collection that I'm going to yeah. be showing everyone a bit later. And I think that was hanging there until 2010, if I'm right. I don't know how it didn't fall apart, but um, it's been in conserve now. So it's quite nice oh. that we still got that. Yeah. And then um, pictures on the wall of, from old principals over the last however many years. And then the two main ones at the end of the dining hall are of Thomas and Jane Holloway. And I know that they have the same pictures, a version by the same artist at the sanatorium, so that they made sure they had these really prominent portraits yeah. at the sanatorium that Thomas Holloway also built. Very different purpose, but they, oh, they have the same pictures. It's an amazing building. And like the, the brickwork, when you kind of take time to look at it, and the detail, it's amazing. And for what it cost. Oh, I know, it's stunning. To what it would cost now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But now it's my favorite bit because it's dessert. So okay. I really like to try this dessert. Okay, so let me get the dessert. That looks delicious. I can't wait to try it. Well, let's serve it up. <laughs> so we know that they had orchards here, so I'm guessing that the apples they would have used would have just come straight from the orchard. And we also know that they kept animals. So everything, nothing had to travel very far to get to the kitchens, I guess. No, I, I would think a lot of desserts would have been apple-based. The orchard, um, I would, there's a piggery gate and they used to have pigs and, and other animals, whether that was part of Holloway or just outside but round on the ground. So they had animals on site, they had fruit, so they would have used a lot on site and, and used them in the dishes to, uh, to save on money. It's quite a big staff as well, because you've got obviously the kitchen staff and then you've got all the gardening, all the farmers, yeah. to keep it all going. Exactly. Okay, here we go. Mm. It looks good. It is. I'm kind of surprised about the meringue bit on the top. Because I wouldn't have thought to put meringue on that kind of a pudding. But it's very nice. It's yummy. No, and then you can tell with the breadcrumbs. So you've got that, mm. if you like, stodge, which helps hold it all together as well. But it also gives it, it's a bit more filling when you're eating it. So you that, don't need a big portion. That reminds me of the bit in apple crumble just sort of where the crumbly bit meets the apple bit and you get that little bit stodgy bit and I really quite like mm. that because it's really yummy and it's very lemony so 
and that was one lemon. So it's just the zest of the lemon and then the juice of the lemon. And the zest is just reduced down in some sugar, just to sort of soften it up mm. so it's not too too strong and a taste and quite leathery, if you like, from the rind. Sort of take the edge off um, and sweeten it up as well. Is this a beginner recipe though? Or not? Because I feel like I could tackle the other one, but I think... No, no, I'm this a is... A worried about a, it's actually a very easy dessert to make. There's, there's nothing in there that should cause any problems apart from maybe the meringue if you don't have an electric whisk and you have to do it by hand, and they then, then it been, might be a problem. They would have been doing it by hand. Um, well, I like to think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we did it by hand for this one. I say we, I, I got one of my staff to do it for me. But, um, so we did it all by hand. I'm so. guessing the head chef would have done the same. Got oh, someone yeah. else to do it. Yeah, delegate. <laughs> right, am I allowed to finish it now? Of course I'm, you are. It's delicious. Mm.